Hello. Uh, apologies for two things. I have not done anything endoscopically for metastatic tumor. That is one. Secondly, my talk is blunted because the talk is directed towards the future directions of spine meds. And the future is nothing different from what Rashekran sir today concluded most of the things. So my talk remains blunted. But as it is a modality and a, a very great modality, it can achieve certain great things. Let's dig into what it can achieve. Thank you, Misap, for inviting me and giving this platform to me. The current status, as already discussed by every stalwart, Eric, Sanjeev, and uh, Daniel, uh, and even Priyank, is that there's a short life expectancy in METS, and the treatment is palliative. Aggressive surgeries has high risk and low return. Post-operative recovery consumes the remainder of the whole of the life. So you don't have much of things. But surgically, we have evolved from better biopsy, better decompression, better stabilization, all the three aspects in the last 20 years. The focus right now is non-surgical methods of therapy, that is chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hormone therapy, immunotherapy, even biological therapies in metastasis. If surgery is needed, minimum collateral damage is to be done so that early return to the multimodal cancer therapy can be achieved. When I dig into the literature, what is available for endoscopy, I, I was shocked that there's not, not much of things in the literature. This was one of the literature which was saying about a UB and the technique had showed up a case of decompression and fixation in an ABC. They had a good outcome, a one-year follow-up. They could decompress and achieve a reasonable outcome with a follow-up of one year. An endoscopic surgery, in case of a transformal endoscopic surgical uh, decompression and stabilization, has been reported by Telfian, that is four patients. So he also had a good outcome at one year. So that is, uh, that, that, that is a, a good outcome for a limited number of patients what he has. And this is the decompression which he can show up for radiculopathy, for uh, single levels, for myelopathy also he had done. The percutaneous endoscopic interlaminar decompression, that is the other modality which is there for, uh, this is another patient which was reported and with, for a lung cancer and they could get away with a adequate uh, non-symptomatic period of so short a uh, time of uh, two months. This is all giving an indication that the endoscopy is knocking from different corridors all around the world and people are doing it and they specifically told about the excessive bleeding which you can encounter. So pre-operative embolization is something which would aid to the uh, endoscopic surgery because all your vision will go off if you find any excessive bleeding in endoscopy. So do a pre-operative embolization if it is there. A, uh, this is again a case report of a transformal endoscopic decompression for a L3 uh, secondary to colon cancer with radiculopathy. And that also again gave a good outcome. The patient finally succumbed after six months, but they also emphasized about the bleeding control and that can be done by a pre-operative embolization. So this was their case with an um, uh, adequate decompression could, that could be objectified. This is again a transforaminal case in a lung cancer. So there is only sporadic cases which have been reported with good advantages of less morbidity, quick discharge, blood loss, infection, speed recovery, return to multimodal RT and CT. But the disadvantage is not talked about. One is versatility. It is not in the hands of all. You all are awaited there. Fluid spread. That is something which has not been mentioned here because this all is fluid-based, full endoscopic surgeries and the fluid can percolate inside and spread the tumor more far away. That has not been talked in this paper. So I am a bit skeptical and that is exactly the reason why I didn't pursue endoscopy in metastasis. But there would be some answer which I am not knowing. The role of minimal access surgeries and the algorithms has been in detail discussed by Priyank. But the latest is this norms framework, which takes into account the neurological, oncological, mechanical, and systemic uh, criteria to decide, and the epidural spinal cord compression score, 
And furthermore, the, uh, the uh, oncology study group has come up with this NSC score which is taken into consideration and it is more objective and better for surgeons to follow. As Eric correctly described, SIN score is just for the non-surgeons to decide whether that patient should be taken an opinion with a surgeon or not. But this is the cases where, where you can use objectively these scores to decide on the further planning of the algorithm as discussed by Priyank. Uh, now, what I have talked about till now is the good news. Now I would try to talk about you is the exciting and the fascinating thing at the same time the bad part of it. This is really dangerous for surgeons. Something which I had started in 2008-9 and I had done good number of cases for say paracentral disc as you are starting as a transforaminal surgery and I had my first failure for a non-indicated case at that point of time where it was said that don't do a central disc and I terribly failed. I kept questioning myself. This was the central disc which I failed. I had to operate again after 10 days. This is the post-operative MRI. From there, the, from there slowly I have picked up, I have learned, improvised and incrementally I have learned so many things that I can produce results, I am confident on me and there are people who are here who, can, who may be doing better than me in transforaminal or any other endoscopy like a calcified disc here, I am able to get away with this and I am able to deliver in a cauda equina syndrome also but these are all limited number of cases. I need more data, everybody needs more data than only. So a 2022 success came after say 10 years of, 12 years of your experimentation and aggressiveness. But at the same time, on the parallel front, what is dangerous and good and exciting is, there was a time when excessive surgeries was done for the tumors. Then soon you realize that the metastatic tumors should not be operated, you go minimal and you irradiate. Then you again realize that there are radiosensitive tumors and you have to touch and give radiation only to the radiosensitive tumors, not to the radio insensitive tumors. So that was the differentiation which was there. So there come the external beam radiation therapy wherein you are subjecting specific radiosensitive tumors to radiation and you have a good outcome. And it was absolutely a no for any other cases which was not radio sensitive. Then again came the next evolution wherein you were able to identify in a tumor surgery specifically the neurosurgeon. You were able to delineate on functional basis that in the operating theater which is the tumor and you could operate specifically to remove the tumor by fluorescence and other methods of dyeing. So that was the other advance, advance which happened. But at the same time, parallelly what had happened is something called SRS, that is stereostatic surgery. The image down is nothing a surgical, but you have to understand that this is not surgery, but it is stereotactic surgery performed by non-surgeon. So this is the bad news for us. This is drifting to a newer specialty, newer people, radiation oncologist, radiation therapist, and not in the hand of surgeon. So that is the bad part of it in the evolution of treatments to this. The future is always with possibilities and I look to all possibilities and I'm fond of Dr. Strait and you all may be looking onto his movies. So I, 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 I see all his series. So what is CyberKnife? CyberKnife is specifically operating. So neurosurgeons, they have been using that for brain. Uh, uh, so, so brain. At the same time, what I said, it is stereotactic surgery, it is not by surgeons. So what you are doing is, you are using this uh, cyber knife followed by the gamma knife, that is, which is more specific to deliver the stereo, uh, stereotactic surgery and you are able to operate within 1.1. This is not surgery, this is ablation. You are completely ablating a radio resistant tumor by mapping it correctly and avoiding all the vital things which would come around. So this is again a surgery but not by surgeons. So you get guided through pedicules which helps the robot to localize where exactly the radiation needs to be given in the mapped section and these are the pedicules which you have to implant onto the spinous process or the nearest locations on the bone so that the robot and the sensor can detect where exactly to deliver the uh, radiation. So dye enhancement is what helps you to identify in endoscopy. So where is endoscope now? In gastro surgery and other 
places endoscopic evaluation of the tumor helps you to identify and resect the tumor separately it is still not in spine there so gastro surgery is again advanced there even optical illumination and endomicroscopes are there wherein even without dye on the basis of the endogenous fluorescence because there are the endoscopes have evolved to such a level that it can even diagnose a tumor on the basis of its endogenous fluoren uh, the fluorescence and the uh, metabolic dysregulation so this is something which is very advanced and soon the ai acquired the data would be able to tell without even a biopsy that this is so tumor and it is how the oncologic pattern of the behavior of the tumor is going to be for surgeons there is ultrasonic bone osteotomes at the same way there is aspirators which can specifically be around the vital structures and completely ablate aspirate remove the tumor so the endoscopic uh, 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 the bone uh, ultrasonic uh, scalpels are already there which can be used through the endoscope and this would something which soon be evolving towards that direction this was one of the studies which has been just taken off from the further uh, 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 further research in japan good number of cases have been subjected to intra operative radiotherapy you operate you resect and you subject to intra operative radiotherapy but they have withdrawn this study probably there are logistics involved in it the outcomes have not been described in toto so this is the level of the uh, work which is going on around in the world and image guided application of iodine uh, seeds into the tumor which slowly emits the radiation would be of help so uh, through an endoscope you could be directly delivering a uh, uh, the radiation uh, capsules there that is other possibility together along with this is developing in nanotechnology nanotechnology is evolving in as a very big way and there is non targeted delivery you are bombarding the whole of the body then you have bone targeted delivery wherein the the molecule is going directly to the bone still not able to differentiate between the normal bone and the tumor bone so it has got its own side effects then is the tumor targeted delivery in the bone wherein the nanoparticle is able to identify the tumor molecule and specifically act so that is the third modality and the fourth one is the localized delivery so here the localized delivery is possible with the endoscope there so that you completely avoid the systemic effect of the uh, uh, nanoparticle which is going to be there and wait this is coming nanobots so they can directly fight there so you can put it there and they may be taking and scavenging the tumor tissue there so this is something which is advances and not to just talk about the cancer pain management where neuromodulation and the drug delivery and spinal cord stimulators and all things are there which again has gone into the hands of uh, pain physicians and another specialty so the take home here is that current role is towards separation surgery and i like everybody of you including me to jump onto this uh, bandwagon hop onto this endoscopic surgery and find ways to do a better separation surgery as of now there is immense possibilities there and the potential and it is all multimodal and it's going to be disruptive i mean disruptive meaning it will get into get going to the other specialties multimodal surgery except the mis stabilization may get obsolete and stereotactic surgery nanobots nanotech are the non surgical management that will dominate after a few decades so you may have or i may have another 10 or say 20 years to contribute through endoscopy in this spinal metastasis not more than that thank you thank you very much